future. And uh, I tell you that uh, as we go through this, that this will stir your soul for the souls of men. As, I'm, as I was preparing this series, I'm also reading the book Revelation. I preached the book Revelation verse by verse many moon years, years ago. I'm always moved by it, especially during this tribulation period. And we'll get into it deeply here in a second. Uh, during that time, there's going to be billions of people that are going to die. Billions. When God pours down those bowls and those series of judgments. And we're not talking thousands of people. We're talking billions of people are going to pass away. And it's a terrible time like the world has never known. You know, Job said, a discouraged and despondent Job once said, Man that is born of a woman is of a few days full of trouble. He cometh like a flower, and he cutteth down. He fleeth also as a shadow, and continueth not. Job chapter 14, verses 1 and 2, which is true. But man is born, and in just a few days is in trouble. Amen? All you got to do is pick up the newspaper, watch the news, and it's not a day goes by that man is in some kind of trouble. <coughs> Job's pessimistic description is tragically true for the unsaved man apart from the grace of God. When a person is not born again by the Spirit of God, when a person is not saved uh, through salvation in Jesus Christ, repentance and faith in Christ and become born again, all he's got is a life of trouble. Amen? Amen. Pessimistic Job here tragically has it right. You know, throughout man's tortured and sinful history, he's been subject to calamities. Amen? It's true. We're subject to calamities. Epidemics, volcanoes, earthquakes, fires, tornadoes, famines, floods, hurricanes, auto death, diseases. It goes on and on and on. Catastrophe has been man's constant companion. Always been there. Throughout recorded history of mankind. But according to the Bible, there's coming a calamity unlike any which the weary world has ever seen. And it's called the tribulation period. Praise God, all born-again believers are not going to be in that. Amen? We're going to be raptured out and the church is not going through the great tribulation. I thank God for that. The Bible clearly teaches in 1 Thessalonians that no born-again believer is going to go through the wrath of God. It won't happen. So as we look at this tribulation time, I want you to notice as you study your Bible, number one, there are various names that are given for the tribulation. As you study the word, it has different names. For instance, in Isaiah chapter 2, as I just read here this morning, it's called the day of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 12. But also notice Isaiah chapter 34. Turn over there. Isaiah chapter 34. And I want you to notice verse 8, Isaiah chapter 34 in verse 8. The Bible says, For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, the year of recompense for the cause of Zion. Here the tribulation is called the day of vengeance. The day of vengeance. It's also called in Jeremiah chapter 30 in verse 7, the time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble. Turn to Je Jeremiah chapter 30 in verse number 7. Jeremiah chapter 30 in verse number 7. <clears throat> For alas, the day is great, so that none is like it. It is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. <clears throat> and then also in Daniel chapter 9... In verse 24, Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 through 27 to 27, it's called the 70th week. The tribulation is called the 70th week. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 9, it's called the time of the end. The time of the end. Daniel chapter 12. In verse number 9. But notice Revelation chapter 6 with me. Revelation chapter 6. 
And verse number 17, Revelation chapter 6, verse number 17. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who was able to stand? The great day of what? His wrath. Remember, the tribulation is not man's wrath upon the earth. This is God's wrath coming down upon the earth. Called the wrath of God. In Revelation chapter 14, verse number 7. Revelation chapter 14, verse number 7. The Bible says, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment has come. The hour of his judgment has come. That's another name for the tribulation period. And of course, Matthew chapter 13, verse 40. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 40, the tribulation is called the end of this world. The end of this world. Turn over to your Matthew chapter 13. In Matthew chapter 13, in verse number 40. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and the burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this world. The end of the world. Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse number 20. The tribulation is called the indignation. It's called the indignation. In Daniel chapter 9 verse 27... The tribulation is called the abomination of desolation. The overspreading of the abominations, you could call it that. The overspreading of abomination. We'll get into that later on. Where the, where the, big, where the one world dictator sets himself up into the temple and says he is God. That's an abomination when any man calls himself God. And then notice Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12. And I want you to notice verse number 1. Daniel chapter 12 and verse number 1. At that time Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Notice, it's, the tribulation is called a time of trouble. A time of trouble. So th those are just some of the names. I didn't give you all of them. This is just a few of them, okay? So anytime you see Day of the Lord, God's vengeance, time of Jacob's trouble, the 70th week, time of the end, the great day of his wrath, the hour of judgment, the end of the world, indignation, the abomination, and a time of trouble. This is all talking about that great future event called the tribulation period, that seven-year tribulation upon the earth. So it has various names. I want you to notice, second, the nature of this tribulation. Notice the nature of it. Notice the following passages describe this fearful time. Notice Isaiah chapter 13. Turn over there a minute. Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 6. The Bible says, Wail, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. It's a day at hand, and it's going to be a destruction from the Almighty. And as, and notice it says, Wail, because people are going to be wailing, crying, because God's wrath is going to be put down upon the earth. Notice verse 7. Therefore all hands will limp. Every man's heart will melt. 
Every man's heart will melt. Verse 10, For the stars of heaven and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going forth. The moon will not cause its light to shine. We'll get into this later on in the series. You know, at night you think it's, you know, the only reason why you can 